Hey guys, it's Natalie. Oh yeah, I cut myself with a knife, sorry. But I am back. I've talked to my husband um, and he is all good with everything. Um, that's why I haven't posted in well over probably a month since my last video saying this might be my last goodbye. Um, let me set this up so I'm not like looking down at the camera. Hold on. There you go. There I am. Um, look guys, I have really missed making videos and really missed you guys. And I've read all the comments from my farewell video that I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make another video or not again. And, um, I've read all y'all's comments. I just haven't responded because literally they had me in tears. And I, um, I thank you for that very much. Um, excuse the hair. It's not, it's not working today, guys. Okay. My cowlick is just not working. It just won't go down. So sorry. But, um, I think what I want to say on this video is this. Everybody wants to talk about narcissism, narcissistic in-laws. And the thing is, you have to realize that through my journey, what I was so blinded by was that there was a healing camp waiting for me to reach out and pop a tent and look under the stars and light that bonfire and roast marshmallows and start healing the way I needed to start healing. Instead of constantly having that hamster wheel of thinking of the things that have happened to me. And I realized that I personally got me stuck in that journey of narcissistic abuse. When there was a hand being reached out to me saying, Natalie, you didn't have to sit through this trauma. You didn't have to keep reflecting on the past. You didn't have to keep reminiscing on the things that could have, would have, if only things that there was a hand given to me that I could have grabbed onto and said, you know what? I am no longer going to allow this to disrupt my life and make it my life. And when I realized that I could reach over and grab that hand of healing, my life changed forever. Because what I realized is when I kept myself st stuck in that woulda, coulda, if only, could I prove myself, is there hope, can I change these people, is anything going to be different, are they going to stop talking trash about me, are they going to love me, are they going to welcome me, am I going to be part of the family, am I going to be that person who's taking the family photo without me in it, when I realized that that is not going to happen. And I realized that there was a hand given to me that opened my eyes to a healing journey of love and tranquility and, and forgiveness that I gave to God. And also a hand given to me that said, Natalie, you don't have to walk this path anymore. You are choosing to walk that path. You are choosing to recognize these bad behaviors from your narcissistic in-laws or narcissistic whoever it is in your life. You're choosing to engage with those people. When I realized that I had the choice not to engage anymore and that I had the choice to engage in healing, 
I stopped dead in my track and I said, I am not going to continue to engage with people that make my life miserable. And I am going to start engaging in happiness, in hope, in love, in, in, in finding myself, in finding freedom from negativity, negative people, and start focusing on the positive of life. Because when you are stuck in the realm of caring what other people think about you, or if you're not welcomed or loved or cherished in a certain family, then you need to realize that that is not, you should not be putting any energy into those people, convincing them to love you because they have made their choice up already. Instead, you focus and engage in the people that have been waiting on the sidelines for you to come back around for your healing journey. For the people that you forgot about because you were too worried about impressing and changing minds of others. Putting all your energy and effort into people that have already made up their mind about you. You cannot change those people. And you definitely cannot change a narcissist. Instead, you have these loving, caring, kind, compassionate people waiting on the sidelines. And some of them even, for, they forgot about you. They gave up on you. But instead, the people that are still there are saying, come to me. I will show you love. I will show you compassion. I will show you what you have been missing, what you have been fighting for. Because when it comes to me, you don't have to fight for the love that I have for you. Those are the people that you should be engaging with. Because you don't have to prove yourself to those people. Those people already know who you are. Because through your actions, they have seen who you are. But when you chose to go and engage with these negative people. Trying to prove yourself of who you are. You are not really being you. You're making up a persona to please these other people and engage with these other people being fake to your character. That is not your character. When you go and pretend and try to people please people that you will never people please. But on the other side, the people that have been reaching out, who have been listening to you, who have been waiting for you to realize and wake up that those people are a waste of your time and energy and love when you could have been giving it to these people that love you, care for you, for your true character because you have proven it through your actions. You have missed out on opportunities and, and memories with people that actually care for you. And instead, you engaged with these negative people and shared negative memories and negative interactions and negative traumas instead of having positive things happen in your life that could have brought you places that you never even could have imagined. But instead, what did you do? You stepped out of character. You made yourself look like an ass. By trying to prove to people that you can't prove yourself to. You stepped out of your own character to be what they wanted you to be, which was never good enough. And you weren't yourself. And that's the number one thing I regret with me. That I stepped out of my true identity, my true character the true personality of who I am as an individual to meet the expectations of somebody 
who I could never meet their expectations. And I tried and I tried and I tried every technique. And it just pissed me off to the point that I stepped out of character so much that I exploded on these people. And then they said, when you explode, that's her. That's her true character. That's who she really is. Remember when I told everybody and I whispered in everyone's ear whenever she wasn't around or he wasn't around that this is really who they are. But it's because you got so pissed off from being fake, trying to please these people trying to be someone that you weren't because they never knew you because you felt like, well, if I was my true self around them and they didn't like me, well, obviously I need to alter who I am as a person, who, who, what my character is, what my values and morals are to meet their expectations, which were never met. And then you get frustrated to the point that you blow up. And when you blow up, that's what they want. That's what they want. That way they can go back and say, see, remember when I told you, this is her. You see how she blew up? You see her? Yeah, that's Natalie right there. You saw her for who she really truly is. But the truth is, you had a fake identity, a fake character. You were not who you were. You were not in your character. You were not your personality. You were not the person that everybody loves besides these people. And that's what's so frustrating is that you think, well, everybody else likes me. Everybody else wants to hang out with me. Everybody else wants to come to my house for dinner. Everybody else invites me to movies and dinners and drinks. And, and to go out and, and, and go do things with them. But these people over here, even though I know these people here love me, cherish me, think I'm awesome. Some of them might even say, you're one of the, the best people I know. But then you go over here to the narcissist side and they don't see what the other people see. And so you think to yourself, well, are these other people that love me and cherish me just saying that to be nice? Or do they really mean it? Stupid hair. Will you leave me alone here? And so what you do is, let me see if I can fix this real quick. So what you do is you say, well, you start to self-doubt. You start to say, well, the people that love and cherish me and think I'm awesome and invite me places and invite me to their home for dinner and let me babysit their kids and let my kids play with their kids. Are they the phony ones? Are these narcissists really telling me the truth about myself? That I'm really not this good person? That I'm really this cruel, malevolent, I can never say that, malevolent, malevolent, character am i this person that they say there's no good and a nobody and a nothing that i won't amount to anything and they don't understand why their son's with me or their their daughter's with me because they see something in me that these other people lied about the people that love me maybe they love me so much that they lied to me and so then you get confused. And so what you do is you go on a mission. You forget these people because you think, oh, maybe they lied to me. Maybe I'm not the person they say I am. So you go over to the narcissist side and you change your face. You put your own mask on. They have a mask, but then you put your own mask on. Because so you didn't have a mask with the good people, the people that loved you and treated you. So what you do is you put a new mask on. And you think, well, if I put this new mask on, they're gonna love me. They're gonna accept me. I put the same mask they have on. The mask they have, I see. So I'm gonna put that mask of the narcissist onto me and see if they love me. And so then you start putting that mask on, parading around the narcissist, 
trying to please these people with the same mask they have on. You have the same mask. They have the same mask. You're out of character. You know you're out of character. Your personality is 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 uh, warped into what they want, and it's still not good enough. So you say, well, wait a minute. I put the same mask that they have on, and they hate me even more for it. So they met me without the mask. They didn't like me. So I stole their mask. I put that mask on to please them because I see their mask and I see how they are. So I think if I wear their mask, they're gonna love me. But then they hate you more. So you're doing and saying the same things they're doing and saying. Your behavior's the same as theirs. You participate in the same things they're participating in. Oh, come on here, give me a break here. You're parading and charading around as a different person to please these people with the same mask they have on, but they hate you more. And then they say you're evil. And then they say you're, you're uh, disturbed when you got the same mask that they got on. Now make that make sense. Make it make sense that you took the mask from them and they say you're the bad one, but you got the same mask they got. To please these people, to act proper, to have etiquette, 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 to do what they're doing to fit in and it's not good enough. And so you're wearing this fake mask and you feel disgusted, but you're trying to fit in. You're trying to get them to like you. You're trying to get them to accept you, to welcome you, to feel part of the family. So when that family picture is taken, you're part of that picture and somebody else that's not part of that family is snapping that picture. But instead, even with the mess that they have, that you have now, they still ask you to step out of the family photo, even with your children, to take the picture of their family when you're part of their family. And so it comes to a time where when you're wearing this fake mask, because any real person that has a true heart and soul who is pretending to be someone that they're not starts to, it starts to eat at you. It starts to make you angry. And then you have a blow up because you're tired of being fake. You're tired of pretending to be part of them because they don't like you anyway even with the same mask that they're wearing and that mask on your face the same mask that they're wearing is just itchy and just you just want to rip it off because you're like this isn't me but I'm pretending to be one of you to get acceptance and it never happens. And then you finally realize, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I can't be fake anymore. I can't be what you are. This is not who I am. I am not a cruel, evil, conniving, backstabbing person. I don't have to follow your rules. I don't have to be you to meet your expectations of what you think your son or daughter should have in their life. I am not his mother. I am not her mother. I am not going to be you. An evil bitch. And so you blow up and you finally say, F it, I'm done. Tired of being fake. I'm tired of pretending to be someone that I'm not. They didn't accept me for who I was before I put that damn mask on that they're wearing too. And you rip that damn mask off that they've been wearing the whole time. And then you look over to the people 
that have been looking at you this whole time that doesn't even recognize you anymore because of what you've been doing in that family of narcissists trying to fit in, trying to be the person they want you to be. Because the people that really know you, they're like, what the hell is Natalie doing? Like, why is she acting like that? Like, that's not her personality at all. Why would she go and be some fake person to please people when she's a kind-hearted, good soul? And so once you're done with that, you turn back and you say, damn, some of my friends left because they saw I was being ugly because I was trying to fit in with them. But then you also look and you see the ones that saw what was going on. And you know what they're doing? They got their arms, re I can't do in this video, but they got their arms reached out waiting to hug you and say, it's gonna be okay, Natalie. We get it. Those people aren't like us. They don't have a soul like us. They don't expect, we don't expect you to be a fake person. We want the old Natalie back. You tried so hard, sweetheart. It didn't work. And we sat here and we cried for you because we wanted it so bad for you. And it hurt us to see you pretend to be something that you really weren't. And they hug you and they say, Natalie, welcome back. We've been waiting on you for a long time. And those people over there that didn't see the true person that you are shouldn't and don't deserve you. And you don't deserve them. Welcome back, Natalie. And you say, thank you. And you might start crying. And you say, I'm sorry. I realized that I was trying to fit into a circle of family that didn't really see truly who I was. And it hurts me because I know deep down in my soul who I am. And I thought by being me, they would love the kind, considerate person I am. I, I even, even with the mask on the narcissist side, I still was compassionate and caring and did things out of my heart because I can't change who I am. I can pretend around those people, but I still did good deeds that was unrecognized. Never got accountability or credibility for any good deeds. And those people over there that love you they said, we've been seeing it the whole time, Natalie, and we're so proud of you. You kept true to who you are. And although you try to fit into a family that didn't see your true nature and your heart are missing out on a wonderful person, but we were watching from a distance. And we saw what you did and we're proud of you. Welcome back, Natalie. And you go back to the people that have been waiting on the sidelines who knew that you were confused, that you just wanted love, that you were looking for love and acceptance in all of the wrong places. But the people that love you the most, that care for you, your friends and family, maybe even complete strangers who have seen good deeds from you. Like some of my students, family members who came up to me and told me when I went to a birthday party for one of my special needs kids, I guess she had been talking about me to all of her family. And while I was putting my skates away, the grandma said, Miss P, come here. 
And I walked over there and I said, yes, ma'am. She gave me a hug and she looked at me and grabbed my shoulders. And she looked at me square in the eyes. And she said, this is a complete stranger too. She said, Miss P, I wish there was more people and more teachers like you in the world today. And I just wanna tell you thank you because you have made such an impact on my granddaughter's life. And all she does is talk about how wonderful and how kind you are to her. And I wanna tell you, thank you for giving her a jacket when we couldn't afford one. So there are people in this world that are watching your every action and every move that you make that you may not think people see, but they see it. And so when you're over here and you're worried about all this negative people, they're complete strangers in this world that see you and appreciate you for the person that you are. And all those people waiting on the sidelines that have been waiting on you to stop focusing on this, have open arms waiting for you to bring the joy of you, the kindness and love that you have to give back to them because that's who deserves it, is the people that love and cherish you, the ones waiting on the sidelines for you because they know who you are. You didn't have to prove it. Through your actions, through the years, through the things you've done, they see it. You don't have to go out and brag about this or that. Nobody knows I, I bought a coat for this girl at school, but her family because I secretly gave it to her and I gave her many other things I've given a lot of students things because I saw that they were in need I bought yearbooks for tons of students because their family couldn't afford it I've given makeup samples to tons of of students like high-end makeup but I didn't like hey teachers hey class look what I'm giving no I did it in secrecy. But they go home and they show their parents and they and stuff. So not only are you impacting one person's life, but the parents and grandparents and whoever else sees the things that you do. You may not know what you, that these people know. But when they see you out in public or they see you at an event or they see you at my school, they know what you did. Maybe they may not come up to you and, and, and say thank you, but they look at you in a certain way like, wow, that is a great, amazing, loving, caring, kind, and compassionate person. And my point is you do not have to prove to the narcissist who you are. It's through little gestures and gifts and things like that that nobody knows but you. And all these other people that love you know or have seen things that you have done. Maybe they don't say it to you, but they know. And that's why they love you. Because of the things that you have done. You didn't put it in anybody's face. You didn't go showboating what you've done. The narcissist on the other hand. Oh, anytime they do anything for anybody, everybody has to know. That's how you know a bad person. But these people over here on the sidelines that you forgot about because you're too focused about the damn narcissist. They don't give a damn what you've done. They won't recognize it. They will not recognize what you've done. But you have the fit, but you have the need that you have to go tell them. And even when you go tell them, they don't give a damn. 
Oh, she's just doing that so she can get, get attention. Well, you know what? I do a lot of things in life that nobody, absolutely nobody knows about. And that's why whenever I go out in my community, people love me. They don't mention the things I've done, but they know what I've done. Paying for school lunches for kids that can't. Buying yearbooks that, that kids can't. They, they see this. Buying stuff for my classroom. Buying gifts for students that I have to go to the counselor's office so no other student can see that I got another student a gift in need. So I don't embarrass the student or so not all the students come up to me and say, hey, I need this, I need that. No, I see needs in my community and I go secretly do it and pull them aside away from other people so they don't know that I did it. But guess what? Those people that I do those things, they go back and tell family members. So when they see me in the community, you know what they do? They say, wow, that's an amazing person. And that is why the people on this side love you. Because you don't showboat it. Because they know what you've done. They don't mention it. Maybe they do. But they know who you are. These people, you think you have to prove it? You think you have to tell them what you've done? Or your accomplishments? Whatever it is. They don't give a damn. You know why? Because they'd never do it in their life anyway. That's why they're jealous of you. That's why they make up lies about you and talk shit about you and say, oh, she's only she's only feeding the homeless to get attention, to get brownie points, to do this and that. Well, bitch, have you fed the homeless? Have you went out and given turkeys to trailer parks, whole Thanksgiving dinners when I didn't have to do so? No, you haven't. Instead, you had your little fancy million dollar home, eating your big ass turkey with all the fixing, all that, while I was going out in the community fucking making a difference. I'll never forget the day. Never. I would forgot my wallet. I was dying of thirst. I asked my in-law. I had my kid in the back. He was like one and a half. Asked her, hey, can you stop at the convenience store? When well, we get to the convenience store, I'm like, I look at my purse. Oh, my God. I forgot my wallet. I was like, is there any way you can buy me something to drink? I'm I'm super thirsty. I'm sorry. She's like, sure. You're going to have to pay me back. Well, back then, a Coca-Cola was like, I don't know, $1.25. Okay, $1.50. So, she buys it. $1.50. This bitch is a millionaire. I kid you not. I'm her daughter-in-law. I kid you not. That bitch asked, because I usually didn't have cash on me. I only had a card. And I was taking care of a small kid. I never, you know, never really went to the bank. I was always focused on my kid. That bitch hounded me. For a week. To give her her $1.50 back. I had a $5 bill. That I was trying to break. But I you know. it When you have a small kid. Going to break a $5 bill. And get your baby out of the car. And all this stuff. In Texas in the summer heat. It, it's, it's not an easy task. To go get change. Okay. So when she came over. She's like hey do you have the money for the coke that I bought you. Took five dollars. I gave it to her. She goes, no, no, no. It's, it was a dollar fifty you borrowed from me. I'm like, just keep it. It's fine. Are you sure? Just, it's, it's fine. Just keep the five dollars. I mean, this is the type of people. I mean, with me, if my friend was thirsty, I wouldn't say, hey, you can borrow a dollar fifty. No. I'm going to go and let you buy a drink and I never expect you to pay me back because you're my friend. And mind you, I was her daughter-in-law with her ba with her grandson. I, I would do it as a favor out of a, a gesture, out of a kindness of my heart. She's thirsty. You don't make someone thirsty. If they want something to drink, get them something to drink. As simple as that. 
But that's the type of people we're dealing with. And you put up with it. While you have these other people over here looking at you crazy like, what? Get the hell away from these people. Come to my open arms and I'll buy you a soda. I'll buy you a 12 pack. You don't ever have to pay me back. And this is just an example. But these people that love you, care for you, they've been waiting on you to come back. Start healing. Forget these people. Exclude them out of your life, regardless if your spouse wants them out or not. If, if he doesn't want to cut contact, fine. There's got to be a list, a written list. Saying, this is what you can talk about. This is what you can't. This is what you, like a list of stuff. And you exclude yourself from that relationship forever. No matter how many times your husband comes and says, Hey, my mom and dad would like to discuss over dinner the problems we have so we can fix our relationship and they can start seeing their grandson again. Uh, no, no thank you. You know why? Because I did that a million times. And guess what? Guess what? Nothing changed. They were on good behavior for maybe a month. And then what they did the 50th time that I gave them another chance. She was on her best behavior after I gave birth to my son for a few months. And then what did she do? She tried to convince my husband to divorce me because the maintenance man sexually assaulted me three times in front of my child and I had to let it happen because I was protecting my child. So what did I do? I called my in-law, tell her what happened so the police can come and all this crap. And so they have a dinner, a private dinner with my husband a week later telling him that if they can't, if he can't, um, uh, what was it? If he can't manage my sexual abuse and my, um, emotional state that he shouldn't feel bad for not wanting to be with me and that, um, they would be willing to help him with a divorce while I was in counseling and she was watching my kid while I was in counseling, by the way, as a favor while wow, she had an agenda and that since my husband worked out of town that they would take my son he would live with them and when he came home on the weekends he could live at their house with my son and that he needed to cut my credit cards and all this uh, stuff off and my husband came home crying in tears could not believe that the, that his parents said that to me when I needed my husband the most. Yeah, I was crying a lot. Yeah, I was a total train wreck. I had to let a maintenance man do that to me in front of my one-year-old son so I could protect him. And they, their resolution was, she's mentally unstable now. Uh, she went through trauma, so she's going to start acting erratic. So you might as well just go ahead and leave now. Like, while she suggested that she, this was her suggestion what natalie why don't you start going to counseling and i will watch your son find a counselor by my house which i did i'll watch your son while you go to counseling and i thought wow what a wonderful woman i finally got my mother-in-law back and she is watching my son so i can work through this assault and that, I was just over the moon. I thought it was the nicest thing. But that whole freaking time, dude, she knew exactly, exactly what she was planning. Yeah, that's, that is the reality of dealing with narcissists. But then again, you had people over here that were willing to watch your son and help you through traumatic events. And but because you were so traumatized by that narcissist, the first person you ran to when you had trauma in your life was the person that gave you trauma. <sighs> okay, it's, it's 40 minutes. I'm sorry. I'm back.
okay? I, 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 you know, you know, guys, I go off on rant sometimes. I know this video is long, but I hadn't done one in so long. Don't know how many people are going to watch it, whatever. But yeah, I'm sorry I went off. But that's the type of people you're dealing with. They have one mask on saying, I'm loving, caring, kind. I'm going to help you through therapy and watch your son. And then, then they switch back to their normal mask. We're going to take your son because she got sexually uh, traumatized. And uh, we're going to help you with the divorce. And your son will live with us. And, like These are the type of, type of people you're dealing with. They have an agenda. And they, what they're trying to do, this is what they're trying to do. They are trying to push you out of their family take control of your family your children and raise them as their own you are just a baby making factory and then they take your child and say it's theirs all right no i gotta i gotta oh god dog i just hit my cut ow Ugh. anyway peace love harmony i hope you enjoy this i know I go on rants. Y'all know I go on rants. I apologize. <laughs> it's just, there's so much in my head all the time. And I'm just, this is supposed to be about healing, but then I just went on a big rant. Apologize. Peace, love, and harmony. Bye, guys.